Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Utility companies provide electricity for all of us. The U.S. electrical grid is a very complicated system because it is a patchwork of state and federal regulations. Each state has slightly different regulations and utilities that regulate typically operate in multiple states. According to a recent report from the Green Investment Advocacy Group, Cirrus, the electric utility industry is transforming from an industry of monopolies to a market-based clean energy competitive system driven by consumer choice. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean utility grade solar energy and wind energy for all of us? What does it mean to switch from monopolies to a market-based clean energy a system driven by consumer choice. To help us unpack the players, the policy, and whether there is really a major reorganization of utilities to address the climate crisis is Peter Sinclair and Kathy Kunkel. Kathy Kunkel is a fellow at the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis, and Peter Sinclair is a videographer with the Dark Snow Project. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having me. So let me start with you, Kathy. What does all this mean, monopolies to a market-based clean energy, and what choice do consumers really have here? Yeah, well, I mean, like you said in your intro, a lot of this differs from state to state, but uh, about 10 years ago, uh, a number of states, starting with California, uh, started to deregulate their electricity markets so that instead of having uh, a monopoly that controlled the generation and the transmission and delivered power to your house, uh, the idea was that power plants would compete with each other to provide power. Uh, and so customers uh, could have more choice in terms of uh, you know, where they got their power from. Um, and in some states, um, that has worked out to, um, to in order and, and enabled people to choose green power providers. It has also enabled, for example, cities like Cleveland, Ohio, to bundle all of their uh, electricity demand in the city and bid it out for 100% renewable energy to supply the city. Um, so it's definitely opened up uh, new opportunities for uh, consumers who want to uh, have more opportunities for renewable energy. Um, it's also, on the flip side of it is that it's also created more opportunities for uh, utilities that want to sort of manipulate uh, the competitive markets to to gain more control. And I mean, the California electricity crisis uh, 10 or 15 years ago was a sort of prime example of generating companies being able to game the system and co cost customers tens of millions of dollars in unnecessary uh, power costs. And, and Peter, why is it important for us to look at utility companies? Who are the big players? What is the potential role for transforming the, to a truly green economic and electrical grid? Well, I've just come from a couple of conferences where I talked to some very well-informed industry insiders. And one of the comparisons that is being made is to the transition that we saw from uh, landline telephones to uh, cell phone-based technology uh, in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, the big players, uh, the big players in uh, uh, landline phones, the ones that held on to their monopoly position uh, did not do so well. The ones that embraced the new technology and embraced the competitive environment uh, are still with us today. And so we're, we're in a new landscape where uh, 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 we're going to see some utilities, the ones that don't want to deal with uh, the new te technology, particularly solar, uh, the panels that people are putting on their roofs all over the West and the South. Uh, it, it, those that don't deal with that and, and find ways to encourage people to so do given that the option of are not fare well in the new environment. Tell us about why there's such a complicated regulatory system in the United States. Yeah, so it actually, it, the history of electric utility regulation is rather interesting because in the early 1900s, most of the electric utilities in the US were publicly owned. They were like municipal uh, electric light companies. Um, 
And the private electric utility industry was trying to get more of a foothold. And they actually promoted the idea of state by state regula regulation uh, to different, to all these different states with the basic argument being, uh, you know, pet, like set up these regulatory commissions uh, that will allow us to operate. And since we'll be regulated, we won't be able to exploit people. Uh, but privately, the companies were saying, and also, you know, the regulatory commissions will be uh, under-resourced and easily captured. And in many cases, that has proven to be the case. Um, and, you know, some re many regulatory commissions are uh, less interested than others in actually, uh, you know, putting a firm firm hand on what the electric utilities are doing. And Peter, what's your take on the re regulatory systems we have? Well, uh, uh, everything Kathy said is true. Um, however, what's changing is that the actual uh, performance of the new technology, solar and wind in particular, has been proving to be so compelling and so uh, so uh, positive. For instance, I talked to a utility regula regulator from here in Michigan just last week, and she told me that five years ago, we assumed uh, that, for instance, wind power was going to be much more expensive than it has actually proven to be. It's coming in now about uh, a third. The, the newest contracts are about a third of what we expected five years ago. Uh, and in large part, that's because uh, the, uh, the wind is proving to be much more reliable, has a much higher capacity, at least here in Michigan. Uh, they, they originally thought these uh, turbines would be generating power only about 30% of the time. And now many of them are found to be generating about 50% of the time. Uh, and then that technology is improving rapidly and we can expect it to continue to improve. So this, so, should, so this should make it much more affordable for us to have clean energy. So, so then what does it mean? What do utility companies mean when they're saying a market-based, consumer, choice-driven uh, option? Well, that varies from state to state. Uh, and in some, uh, some states, uh, you could say maybe California, they're really kind of uh, making it easy and sort of greasing the skids for people to say, put solar panels on their roof. Uh, other states around the country are, um, some, the utilities are trying to set up barriers like extra charges that they want to apply to people who, who would like to have solar panels. And, and interestingly, people both on the uh, political left and the political right are fighting very hard against that because uh, for the left, it resonates in terms of, uh, of uh, clean renewable energy, but for the right, it, it resonates in terms of, of what they're calling uh, energy freedom, my freedom to generate my own energy. And, and you think some people are actually going to choose coal that pollutes the air? No, I think uh, the, the problem, the coal has so many problems right now that I am telling people that if uh, any coal plant that is not already currently under construction uh, is probably not gonna be built in the United States. And, and uh, Kathy indicated that uh, they're having problems uh, in places overseas as well. So the, the future for coal is not a rosy one. And, and that is because? Well, uh, it's because of multiple factors, uh, uh, a big part because of the, the new competition from renewables, but also uh, you know, the story we've heard about 200 year supply of coal here in the United States is a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit misleading because the coal is there in the ground, but we have reached a point where you have to dig deeper and deeper and pull more rock off it to get to it, which is an expensive process. So if you want coal at the price that we're willing to pay, then uh, that's in short supply. And so uh, that's that's really changing the count. Give us a, a picture of what utility scale options there are and what local options may look like. Yeah, so so like you're saying, I mean, there's there is kind of a, a tension here between uh, renewable energy that is owned by utilities that is large scale uh, versus the distributed and local options, which the utilities perceive as much more threatening to them um, because utility rates are based on uh, 
recovering the, the investments that utilities have already made in generation. And so if more and more people are using less energy because they're generating it themselves and they're buying less from the utility, uh, that what, what is that really mean? Final. What does that mean, generating it themselves? How, how does that work? Like, like putting a solar panel on your house, for example, or on your school, or having a, a community band together and put up a wind turbine that's locally owned, which is not all that common in the US, but is extremely common somewhere like Germany and elsewhere in Europe. Um, those kinds of things are uh, quite threatening to the utilities business model. Um, and so some utilities are reacting to that by kind of embracing it and trying to be the ones that that own that local generation. So for example, NRG is a major electric utility um, that wants to get into the distributed generation business and basically own solar panels on people's houses that people could rent from them, for example. Um, and then other utilities, um, their strategy is a more political strategy to just try to stifle uh, that kind of distributed generation. Um, for example, Arizona uh, is, you know, attempting to roll back uh, laws about solar to make it uh, much less economically attractive for people to put solar on their houses. And many other states have been pushing things like that as well. So that's that's kind of the real political battleground right now in a lot of states around uh, distributed solar is, you know, utilities trying to uh, impose new fees and uh, reduce incentives for people who want to put solar on their homes. And then as Peter was saying, both left and right of the political spectrum, people fighting back against that and saying, you know, no, the technology is here. Like we have the right and we should have the freedom to generate our own power. Hmm. And, and, P and Peter, you've been to a number of conferences uh, talking about these issues recently. Um, tell us what are the sort of the more dominant thoughts uh, on this go uh, massive utility scale or local? I think it's very important to realize that the Edison Electric Institute, which is the think tank that utilities themselves have set up to tell them what's going to happen in the future. The Edison Electric Institute in the last year has produced a major report that said the model that utilities have, have lived by for the last hundred years is, is going to be, is going to uh, go away because uh, the, the new uh, technologies, particularly distributed solar and wind and uh, other types of renewables are going to break that model. Um, so uh, the, the question for utilities is, are, are, they, are they going to be on, try to get out in front of that or are they going to try to drag their feet? Um, you know, the old joke about uh, the American auto industry back when the, for instance, the Japanese first became competitive is every time there was a new government regulation, the uh, Japanese would simply hire engineers and uh, General Motors would hire lawyers. And some utilities are hiring engineers and, and, and being proactive, and some are just hiring lawyers to see if they can drag their feet. Well, I thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.